class we would understand derivatives of predicate calculus now predicate calculus we have two important derivatives instantiation and generalization so let's understand this one by one in our last section we understood what is predicate calculus so predicate calculus we use variable instead of cal uh, instead of constant so let me take the very same example which we discussed in the last class i take p x and y which i represent as x plus y is equal to 3 now instantiation means what instantiation means i am trying to substitute the variables by the consonant a uh, constant sorry and see whether that comes as true or false so let me take the example 1 example 1 i take p 1 comma 2 and that would be 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 that makes it true in the second example i take p 4 comma 0 which makes it 4 plus 0 is equal to 3 as false because this is incorrect and this is what we also called as the propositional function and here we use the concept of instantiation why because i am using individual constants rather than the variables to prove whether it is true or false so this is the first derivative of the predicate calculus which is instantiation now the second important concept is generalization generalization is a kind of similar representation of what we have understood in traditional logic so predicate calculus is a part of modern logic and modern logic focuses on the uh, concept of generalization universal and existential however the traditional logic focused on a e i and o prepositions that we have understood so here how these traditional logics which were a e i and o that is all no some and some not would be represented as the part of generalization so we have two elements under generalization one is universal and the other is existential so existential is represented by a mirror image of e and universal is represented by an upside down a so that's a common symbology that we use also i can write it as for all x which we call it as universal so i can write it as for all x and this for all x can be written as inverted a x or x in bracket either of those makes the same sense now this is where we generalize so in generalization what is important in generalization we have taken two instance one is the universal instance the other is the existential in the instance so existential in instance is an instance where i say at least one or some universal is an instance where i say all and here i say some okay the symbology we have written here both of these make it clear so let's move forward with the examples so for the universal let's talk about the example my example here is all dogs are mammals now what i can write here i can write here that for all x i first write it in the quantifier form so in the quantifier form i can write it as x bracket px tends qx that means what i am trying to say here is for all x if x are dogs x are mammals and that's how we depict it okay and that's therefore it is universal in nature now when it is universal i say i can also write it as that all individual properties all individual properties of p also has properties of q 
okay and that is universal i repeat again all dogs are mammals that means i am saying for all x if x are dogs x are mammals that would make it true and therefore it is universal let me take another example for existential so i'll take the example simultaneously that would make it very clear i say some dogs are brown now what i need to explain here i need to explain here that x is a dog and x is brown only and only if x is a dog and x is also brown then i can say some dogs are brown so when i am writing this how would i write i would write that there is at least one such x for which the x is a dog and x is brown okay so p and q represent dog and brown here now i would read it as for at least there is at least one such x for which if x is a dog x is and x is brown then and then only i can say that some dogs are brown that means if i want to say some dogs are brown i definitely need to prove that there is at least one such case where it is dog and it is also brown and once i prove that there is dog and it is also brown then if there is at least one such case i can say it is existential in nature and therefore we call it existential now this was the generalization the universal generalization and existential generalization but as we move forward we would also understand universal instantiation and existential instantiation and how we proceed from universal instantiation to universal generalization so that is about understanding the derivatives of predicate calculus or the theory of quantification or first order logic as instantiation or generalization